Okay, have you a look at that? Have you always got to revisit this? I'm not sure why the last video I made on this, uh, they corrupted for some bloody reason, but let's, uh, I'm going to set the camera on a tripod this time. A bit of a better viewing angle. And now uh, we can, uh, yeah, run this thing off a of VFD for a little bit. I can't do it for too long because it's, uh, these uh, fans have to be going in there and they need to know what it's doing otherwise it's just it's going to overheat and overpressurize and overload the compressor which in this if I'm yeah which is what most likely it's going to do anyway I'm just running the compressor only so that's most likely what it's going to do it might overload and get too much pressure and more than likely chip out my VFT as a result but as I said in the previous video it's, it's all been megged fine the motor's fine so there's no problems there. Let's uh, get the VFD set up and we'll uh, see what this thing can do. Okay, viewers, it's all wired up. Let's uh, start it on low. I'm not going to run it at 100 hertz. I've got the VFD speed on low. Because it's probably this thing at 100 hertz. It's probably going to do some, uh, probably a fire rod or something. Not designed to go uh, that fast. Okay, we'll go start it off and forward, power it, power it up. Set it on about halfway, about 40 hertz. I've got it set on. Turn it off. That's gotten cold. Yeah, that's working. That works fine. Holy hell, that's working fine. Sucking in here, pulling the fidget in here, Pushing it out there. That's gotten a bit warm. That's got refrigerant in that. 50 hertz. Yeah, so you take the 50 hertz, it puts up too much pressure. Yeah, that's chipped it out. That got nice and cold. There is a refrigerant in there. That's not cold there. That pipe's not cold. Only that one's cold. So this little reversing valve must be off. I think that's used for defrosting, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's definitely going the right way around. Yeah, that's the colour sequence is right. So it sucked in here and that got cold in here. Interesting. That sounded quite healthy. That compressor sounds healthy. The compressor's pushing the refrigerant out this way. Now it's back into this valve block. But from there, it doesn't know where to go. Okay, if you trigger this solenoid and pull one of this piston one way or the other, yeah, this is this is a cooling only unit. So what that reversing valve might actually be is for um, defrosting. Yeah, that's a defrosting valve because one pop goes in this accumulator from the back, the other pop goes down out to the house. So that must, yeah, it's definitely a cooling only because the um, order controls for this thing is cooling only. There's no um, reference on this unit that it says that it's a heating. It says it's yeah, cooling only. Yeah, it's a cooling only system. So this reversing valve will be to, um, for defrosting. So if the indoor unit gets a bit too iced up, it just uh, automatically defrosts. But that could press the center quite healthy. That sounded good. Built up a bit too much pressure. I kept the drive out, so I don't want to blow a bloody line and get shot in the face of a refrigerant and compressor oil. This is an R22 system for its original charge of R22. I don't see how much is in there. Let's get the little uh, magic spec out here. What's it say on here? Um, it doesn't say how much though. Be yeah, about probably four, three kilos, I reckon, of R22 in this system. But that worked all right. Yeah, anyway, let's take a camera around and see what the rest of the actual unit looks like. But yeah, it's not ideal to run a refrigeration system like that because that just puts too much stress in the compressor and needs the um, reversing valve doing something and to pick up the indoor unit the thermostat when that gets cold. Otherwise I'm just going to uh, build up too much pressure and just destroy it even more. But 
These fans, they are... Yeah, they're only single face fans. So it's had a repair, so it, must, it has been regassed. We've had a blowout here, and it's been repaired. Yeah, it's been done a while ago. That's a, that bit there's been brazed over and patched. This left the um, get the thermostat for the indoor unit to uh, work properly. You see here, that's all just corroding away. But the actual copper line itself is in good nick. There's no um, corrosion or any pitting on any of the copper lines in this thing. But there you go. They compress the red for a brief bit. There's your charging valve there. That's where you charge the system for fitment. These um, older units would have been em empty with. Uh, inert gas or nitrogen in them. Then what you did, you uh, soldered your pipe works on, took the caps off, soldered it on, and then you um, put everything together, and then you would have pumped the vacuum. This whole thing would have been under a vacuum. And then you uh, charge the here with your refrigerant, because that's the only port I can see where you would charge it. Yeah, that's the only thing I can see where you would charge it with refrigerant. The new systems now, the uh, they come with the refrigerant and you just put your line set on. There's valves here, you put your line set on, you evacuate with the air vacuum pump. Then when it's ready to go, you just open up the valves and the refrigerant goes to the indoor unit. The same when you take the indoor unit out, you shut off the high pressure side valve and let the compressor suck everything and evac the indoor unit down. Then you can uh, disconnect it and shut both the valves, shut the compressor. I think I shut the uh, yeah, suck the, shut the suction valve back down, then turn the compressor off, the unit off, outdoor unit off. And that's as much of the refrigerant you can get trapped inside here and the outdoor unit as possible to save. The less you lose, the better, because then when you get a recommission it, you won't have to top the refrigerant up, it's going to work, it's going to work uh, normal. As I said here, it's got that, that uh, thermal cutout for the discharge to be disconnected. Now there's the other valve up there. There's one here and one there to charge it with. I don't know why I've disconnected that though. That's a resettable one too. Manually resettable, it's kind of cool. That gets too hot. Normally it's supposed to shut down, goes to the compressor here, it's been looped back. It goes into the controller box. So that goes to a contactor or something and turns it off. But the compressor's not damaged, so there must have just been a last resort. Yeah, that's probably to do with the defrosting part of it. But anyway. Yeah, it's been disconnected for a while. The fuses in the meter box are disconnected. This is all uh, not live. It's been probably five or six years, I think the neighbour said. But six years ago they stopped using this and then got it all disconnected. Yeah, the indoor units are even disconnected too. The switches and the walls don't do anything. Anyway, at least the compressor's still good. That sounded quite healthy too, no knocks or clunks or rattles or anything like that. Anyway, that'd be enough for now. Thanks for watching. Quick recap viewers. One of the reasons why it might have actually chipped out, this is not a Delta compressor. The way this compressor's round, it'd be star configuration only. Because yeah, the nameplate says 380 minimum, 380 to 440, 400 to 460 volts. This VFD is only ideal for a, a delta situation. This only puts out 240 volts, three phase. This is not designed for that, it's not wired that way. So that would be the most logical co uh, cause why my drive chipped out. That the motor in there is not wired for delta, it's only star configuration. Hence the higher voltage rating on the compressor. Yeah, if I had a three phase VFD, that put out um, uh, 380 to 440 volts, a three phase one, it would have been fine. I could have went to a um, yeah, disaster. Boom! <laughs> but yeah, that's only I'll deal with a Delta situation because it's a single phase VFD. It can't boost the 240 volts out three phase. It can't because it's only got 240 volts going in from single phase. That's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is anyway. Thanks for watching.